Welcome to Kermode Uncut. I'm here in the bowels of the Curzon Soho in London's exciting West End with one of my favourite actors of all time, Phil Davis. Phil, you're here to do a Q&A about your new film, Borrowed Time. That's right. Such a pleasure to meet you. Tell me a little bit about how Borrowed Time came together, because I know it's a labour of love. It is a labour of love. I certainly didn't do it for the money. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was about two years ago and I got a text saying that this script was uh, around and uh, they sent it to me and I just sort of fell in love with the character, really. He's a retired teacher. He's an alcoholic. And he's, he's curmudgeonly. He's curmudgeonly and he's, um, he's very antisocial. He's locked himself away with a load of stuffed animals and he's sort of declared war on the world, really. And this hapless kid tries to burgle him because he's in, in trouble with money and he catches him. Now oh, what? Um, make my tea, punk. I never make one for myself. Go on then. A very um, unlikely kind of friendship sort of develops between these two uh, people who have more in common than they uh, realise at first. And, uh, and they kind of open each other up, really. And, uh, and it's a very, I think, a very funny, very moving and very smart little movie. Me, Kevin. Go away. Who else have you got? Spend the rest of your life sitting in your living room surrounded by dead stuff. We always hear about how difficult it is to get, you know, independent movies made. And the, I first found out about this because you got in touch with me and said, there's this movie, there's a lot of love in it, but no money. How did it all come together? How was the money raised? Well, the money was raised uh, through a scheme called the Microwave Scheme, where they uh, mentor producers and directors first time. It's, and they mentor about 10 and then eventually some drop out. Yeah. And then they make three movies. This was made on £120,000. Which is peanuts. Which is peanuts. I mean, low budget movies are, you know, two million quid. So this was absolutely nothing. Everybody uh, earned uh, the national minimum wage from the lowliest runner to the uh, DP and all the, you know, all the people. And so it was a very, very difficult task to make it. Uh, but it just meant we had to be disciplined. We had to be on the ball. You know, we had to know what we were going to do and how we were going to do it to get it done in 18 days. And having got the film made, the next big hurdle is distribution. I mean, it's one thing getting a film finished, loads of films get finished, but very few of them actually get decent distribution. I mean, you're here for a special screening at the Curzon Soho, which is a really, really nice cinema. We've had to move from the small screen into the big screen to yes. have a bigger turnout than they expected, which is terrific. But how hard is it to get this kind of film distributed? Well, I do a lot of low budget films, and most of them don't see a cinema. Right. That's the truth of it. Um, and so what these, um, these guys did, these young producers, they weren't happy with any of the distribution deals that they were offered. So they set about raising some money and they used a thing called Kickstarter. Yeah, which is which, a very big thing now. A very big thing and they use it in the States. Um, you can use it for, uh, f for production funds, you can use it for, for, for uh, raising uh, money to write a script. We used it to make a distribution fund and we raised uh, £22,000 in a month. Um, which is uh, not a lot of money, but it's better than nothing. And the BLFI matched it, and that meant we could uh, distribute the film ourselves. Uh, I've always thought that you being involved with a project would bring it some kind of, you know, certainty. Okay, fine, if Phil Davis is attached, then obviously we know it's going to have a certain saleability. Is that the case? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think if, if there'd been, you know, a three million, four million pound budget, you might not have seen my name on the poster. It right. might have been Michael Caine or uh, Terence Stamp or someone like that because um, you know, they're bigger names than I am, and that's what distributors are interested in. Do you manage to do just the things you want to do? Because you do seem to be one of those actors who chooses their roles, you, you, know, you do stuff you're proud of, you don't do a whole bunch of splashy action, stupid stuff that you're not interested in. Well, by and large, I'm pretty lucky, and, uh, and most of the things I do, I choose to do. Some things I have to do, if, if things are running a bit short, you know, and I have to make a living like everybody else then I'll go away and do something that I'm not really sure of. But by and large, uh, I can choose my work carefully. What work are you most proud of? Um, well, my work with Mike, some of the telly stuff I've done, Bleak House on the telly. And last year, or was it the year before, I did a monologue for Channel 4 called Double Lesson, yeah. which was a fantastic piece of work. It rather disappeared without trace. But that was, I think, probably one of the best things I've done. Yeah. Hardly anyone saw it. You've got a Quadrophenia revival coming up. What's that? Well, there's a reunion screening next week and we're all going to get together and talk about it afterwards. So listen, if people want to go and see Borrowed Time, how will they find it? People around the country? Well, it's spreading out around the country shortly. It's still on in London and uh, I believe it'll be on a DVD soon as well. Cool. It's a real pleasure. I look forward to doing the Q&A with you and after all these years, I am really, really thrilled to meet you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Phil. You've got any, like, mates that are, like, you know, alive? I should shoot you in the face. Not used to polite conversation, I guess.